The next presentation is titled Follow Your Passion. Follow Your Passion. And uh, this will be presented by an award winning entrepreneur, founder, and chairman of uh, Extreme SEO Internet Solutions, and that is uh, Sharanyan Sharma. Well, he's a person who started his own venture back in 2009. Listen to this with minus. 26,000 as a capital and built 900 million worth company within nine years in Bavunia. He is an award-winning tech entrepreneur who won awards such as Young Entrepreneur of the Year, Emerging Entrepreneur of the Year, Best Entrepreneur of the Year from several local and international associations. He is a founder and chairman of Extreme SEO International Internet Solutions. Could you please welcome? Could you together, everybody, and welcome on stage, Sharanian Sharma. Woo! What an energy! Okay, here we go. Back in 2009, I was a van driver in Kalampur. I mean, this is the very first time I'm standing in front of you guys, like a 2,500 people over here. I'm so excited, a bit nervous. This is how my life got transformed within nine years as an entrepreneur. I'm going to share my story as well as how you can pursue your passion and then how you can, instead of following, how you can lead your passion. So what's the difference between passion and leading passion? I'm going to explain one by one. Back in 2020, 2013, I have been invited by one of the tech associations, Jeffna, to deliver a keynote about introduction about digital marketing. I mean, like a six years ago. That's the very first presentation. That's the very first keynote uh, I'm going to deliver in that time. What I did was, like, uh, I have created 40 slides with loaded with tons of text, animations, and images. And I went there, just like a 75 participants. I started my presentation. So it's like giving my introduction, and then I turned like this, started reading it, because I didn't prepare the presentation. What I did was like a, writing a poem with writing tons of words and images and articles. My mistake is like, I didn't focus my participants. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't go through my participants' personas. What I did was I just cared about my presentation, which means I didn't focus my passion. So what does it mean that passion? What do you mean by passion? It's an energy. It's a feel. It's an enthusiasm that you have to feel it. So when you do something, that you will feel it. So what's the difference between job and passion? Job that you will hate to do, but the person, maybe you will do it for free. Why the hell that you are here? To experience the experience. Say yes, to experience the experience. Maybe most of the guys, you guys are techies and tech enthusiasts. So probably this is the main reason that you guys are here. So most of the people, most of the passionate people who are in the techie technology industry, they will do everything for free. So this is what we are calling like a following the passion. Following the passion, it's like, maybe if someone is going to ask you to write an article or create a design, you will do it. You will say yes and you will do it. So what's the meaning of leading the passion? So once you realize that you have the skill and knowledge, then you will start 
working for or creating some kind of venture based on your passion. For me, when you are, if you ask me what, what does it mean that, it's a mindset that you have to create it, that you have to install it. So how you can determine the passion, maybe, um, do you have the passion about the technology? Do you have the passion about what you are doing right now? So how you can determine? All these things, you can see, based on your result, when you do something that you will realize it, so you will start loving it, what, what, you, what you guys are doing it, what you guys are delivering. Apart from that, maybe, the passionate people, they rarely compare each other's. They rarely compare or rarely compete each other's because they, they feel like they are unique. This is the difference between the, the professional people who are working for money and the people who are working for passion. The people who are working for passion, they will focus on each and every pixel. They will focus on each and every aspect. The people who are working for money, what they will do, they will simply focus on delivering the project or push down the project to get the money or earn the money. This is a huge difference between the working for money and working for passion. When it comes to passion, you'll be all in, which means maybe if someone is going to ask you, hey, can you do the design? Can you design a timeline for, you, for me or for my brand? What you will say, yes, of course I can do. Maybe I can deliver multi-variation, which means you are going to deliver 10 different variations. But the same question, if a professional, a company is going to ask you to deliver a, deliver a timeline for money, what you will do, you will simply throw out just like a two or three slides. Two or three different variations because you're focusing on money. The people who are focusing on passion, absolutely different things. They want to deliver the satisfaction rather than throwing for money. And of course, you can feel other people's pain, the people who are working for passion. Definitely they will get to know. They know how hard is this. So when they are working for money, when they are working for passion, it's something different, absolutely different. Because they are not just working for money, which means creating, creating something that, based on their mind, grinding their brain, this is something a different aspect, different attitude. Okay, so that's an intro about passion. And here I'm here to talk, uh, share about my story, so which is going to be like uh, 15 minutes. Again, going back to the 2009, I was a wine driver here like a six months, and then I started studying BSc in IT from SLWIT. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I'm not able to continue my education because of the country situation, or maybe I don't have the financial support that during the time. And the university, they decided, they, they predicted, I'm overqualified because I, don't have, I didn't even pass A-level. So they predicted, probably, in future, somewhere, I'm going to be the visiting lecturer for SLIM or maybe Slate. So I'm just giving an exaggeration. Still, I don't want to improve my English. You can see my elocution is terrible. Grammar is beautifully terrible. I'm really proud of that. The only thing, if I can speak you like your fancy English, what's the difference between you and me? My name is Saranyan, I'm unique. And by the way, I have been fired from the first job because of my speed driving. This is where I get to know my personal passion. The personal passion, because that was, a van, um, that was a canter. I have to deliver some kind of books for each and every shop. So if I drive like this, just imagine a boss can't give a job. No. They fired me. Thereafter, I realized I can't do better than that. Maybe I'm not born to do a typical driving. In Kalampu, so during the war time, I'm not. Uh, I don't have a proper support, or maybe I don't know where my parents are alive or not. So during the time, I started doing some kind of part-time part jobs, but unfortunately, I'm not able to have the sufficient money to manage my, the personal things, personal expenses. So which means 
this is where I learned about uh, how I can manage my hunger just having some water for a period of three days. Or walking from Dehiwala to Hotehena just without having five rupees. It was a good lesson. It's a really a very good investment. I feel like I'm gifted. I'm really, I'm really proud of that, that moment. And then I finally found my passion, which means... So while I'm studying in SLWIT um, in 2007, one of my lecturers, he said, there's a subject for e-commerce. So I'm more keen about the, the transactions and how the transactions are happening through online. I'm really keen about that. So when I raised the question, she said, hey, Saranian, you have to study for the paper exam only. Why you are digging deeper? So this is where I got suspect. So she's a bit scared about me, or she's a bit jealous of, about me, or something like that. So I started digging deeper about the e-commerce and transactions and all this stuff. So this is where I get to know my professional passion. Then I went back to Vaunia because I'm not able to continue my education. I just completed first semester and went back to Vaunia. I started my, comp started my first company with single Pentium 4 computer. How many of you know Pentium 4 at this moment? Raise your hands if you know Pentium 4. Oh. Hmm. Something different. So at the moment, you can see Pentium 4 and all these series in museum. But your generation X and millennials are well familiar with i-series. So all these people are having Pentium 4. I'm the only, only person having the LCD monitor during the time. <laughs> it's 2009 in Vaunia. You know what? The first employee I hired, I told him, hey, you're selected. Just go back and come back again within 14 days. I'll buy a stool for you. This is what, this is what I told him. Because during the time, I don't have money. So we worked. I worked myself to buy a stool as well as a table for him. And then I bought my comp I bought a few computers for him. Then we got this. Within three years, I managed to get a new office with three-story building. And it's like this. So within three years, my company scaled as an um, enterprise-grade digital marketing company with more than 60 number of in-house co-workers. In my company, there is no employees. All of them are co-workers. All, all of them are my colleagues. Some of them are here, which means they are the boss for their jobs. There is no boss in my company. Yes, you can see the transformation. Ah, this is me. And then after maybe oh, four or five years, I turned like this. And then, within, four, within five years, I received um, few, several awards from a different, different association about the, the success of the company. So, so this is something uh, really, really hard to start a company in Vaunia, remote area. Uh, not only the government problem, not only the pressure from the government, as well as we had, I faced so, so many problems from the societies as well. So this is the typical stuff. Because of that problem, I'm here. If there's no problem, nobody going to grow up. So if there's a problem, go and face it. Have a look at the problem, you will see so many options. So what you guys are doing here, it's like a, you're just staring at the problem. You're not ready to face it. This is the common issue we all are having here. Like I said before, in 2008, I was a van driver, you can see. So I used to drive this canter in Peta and all the way. So what we are doing here, it's like a, we're always worrying about what we don't have. What we lost so far. We never think about what we are going to gain and what we have learned so far. So which means when you're losing something, which means it's an experience, it's an investment. So you're going to gain something, a new value. Don't regret it. Accept it and move on. Like I said before, they fired me. I didn't regret, regret because, because I got this. It's not about how fancy is your vehicle. It's not about how fancy uh, is your language. The product that you are having, the things that you are having, it's making you satisfied. Are you feeling great? Are you feeling proud? 
So this is very important for your life. Most of the people, we always uh, crazy on BMW and all these fancy cars. Just imagine if you buy an Audi, if you buy a BMW, what kind of crap that you're going to face it. So it's like a, having a Ukrainian girl as a wife. So which means you have to spend, you have to earn, uh, you have to have a different job to satisfy them. Okay, so it's better stick with these things. It's really good. Trust me. Again, so this is where I studied as a student, Slim. Now I'm going there as a visiting lecturer with my broken English. The, the point I'm trying to tell you guys, it's not about uh, the language or maybe your pronunciation. It's about you and your value. Your name depends on your value. Name depends on your result. So when someone telling your name, it's depends on your result. See, so if, if you do something really bad, the people will remember you. If you do something really, really good, people will respect you. They will influence you. It will influence, it will create a rapper, it will create a rapper about you. So please, don't just focus for fame. Don't just focus for money. Try to do something that should be unique. You have to do something really, really unique. Try something different and accept the failure. Failure is really, really good. And then, um, I won several awards, like uh, uh, Emerging Entrepreneur of the Year, Entrepreneur of the Year, as well as my company also won uh, Best Digital Marketing Agency in Sri Lanka. I'm really proud of that because uh, I'm just a representative, I'm just a proxy of my employees. So the people who are, the people who are supported, I'm just holding this award because behalf of my employees, behalf of my co-workers. That's it. They made me like this. Again, the Mr. Lahiru, he's my very close friend. As he said, the entrepreneurship life is absolutely different from the typical business people life. The business, pe business person and entrepreneurs, absolutely different. So the entrepreneurs, they don't focus on money. So what they do, they will die for their goal. They will, they will die for their passion. So this is the difference. This is the main difference between the business people as well as um, the entrepreneurs. So entrepreneurs, they will go even uh, A, B, C, D, Z, or whatever the name it's there, they will go for it. So basically the business people, what they do, they will count on the numbers. They will rely on the numbers. Of, of course, they will have a backup plan. They always have a backup plan. And there's a plan B, there's a plan C. Of course, there are some escalation plans as well. But for the entrepreneurs, there's nothing. They will jump and then they will do the plan. So this is the, this is the life of an entrepreneur. And on, most of the entrepreneurs, they always prioritize their family. When it comes to the personal stuff, they always prioritize their family. So like this, Yes, basically I'm a Brahmin. You know, Ayer, yes, I'm a, I'm a Brahmin. So this is my family, because uh, why I am bringing my... Uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not trying to brag myself. I'm trying to give you a portrait. I'm trying to give you a clear picture about an entrepreneur life as well as a person who was pursuing their passion. The characteristics, it's something similar. So this is my life, and this is my family, a small family. I'm really gifted, which means... My life is something different. So after the marriage, maybe from the influence or maybe from the pressure, yeah. People used to say, I'm really lucky, not, not just for getting uh, right employees. Of course, I'm having a right family. The people who always care about me, People who always care about not only me, not only the humans, always, even my car always caring about me. So if you check my Facebook profile, then you will get to you know what happened today morning. So most of the people, they, uh, the people who know Saranian, they know what I do. And my professional person as well as my personal person. By the way, I'm a bit um, fanatic about the photography. You can see it. Wherever I see something, it's something like that. And you can see that car, the white one, sees my girlfriend. Don't confuse. Sees my wife. But unfortunately, you can see, when I see something really, really um, 
amazing. I even forgot my girlfriend. She's naked now. I'm sorry about that. Okay, um, coming to the community, what I'm doing here, it's like um, I'm a community leader. I'm a local community leader for Startup Week, and you heard about Techstars, one of the largest VC and tech community in the world. So we are doing uh, community-related, startup-related uh, programs here in Sri Lanka. I'm a local community leader for Startup Week in Sri Lanka. This is the previous startup events that we added here in Sri Lanka. There are two things I want to highlight, you guys, um, when it comes to passion, the professional passion as well as the personal passion. So what does it mean that, the professional passion? So when you do something, then you will feel great. Even though you're not going to check your time, you will forget everything. So you are, you're not going to feel stress. You're not going to feel like, hey, I'm getting the right reward for what I'm doing here. So when you feel in that way, you're on the right track. In the personal passion, you're not going to seek money. You're not going to seek any profit. You're not going to seek any fame. When you do something, you will feel great. This is what we call this a personal passion. Even though same thing, similar thing, that you, are, you will forget everything when you are when pursuing a passion, the personal passion. Great example. Look at this. It's a tech community. Geeks, developers, designers, blockers, all the tech geeks are here. Are they giving you any money? No. Even we are willing, maybe you are willing to pay 100 rupees. Because why? You really want to experience the experience here. That's the reason you are here. Most of the people, they used to say, um, my startup failed. I have a great idea, but unfortunately, I'm not, I'm not getting the right investor. I have a great idea, but I'm not getting the co-founder. Why the hell that you need a co-founder if you have a great idea? Go and fail it. Seriously, go and fail it. It's a great investment. You don't need any money, you don't need an investment to start your own dream or damn company. I started my company with 28,000 minus, which is a loan. My, now, right now, within nine years, my company valued as a 90 million company. There are resellers, they are willing to acquire my company with, with entire staff members. But even if I say yes, take it, my coworkers are not ready to leave me. I'm a bit locked. So please, if you really want to go for a startup, go for it. Don't just wait for the time. Don't just wait for the momentum. Don't just wait for the right co-founder. It's like this. There are tons of girls. Okay, you're going to pass it. There is just one girl she's going to look at you, or you're going to look at, the, look at her. The moment your mind will spark, you, spark about her, or spark about something, that mind will tell you she's going to be a wife. It doesn't matter she's a Miss World or maybe Miss Sri Lanka. It doesn't matter. So that kind of momentum, that kind of spark will happen when you're exploring a startup. It will tell you this is going to be a damn company. That time, that moment, you really need, don't need to focus on getting co-founder, getting investment. Mm -hmm. Just go for it. Everything will come to you because you have the great passion. You have, your mind is fully determined. Just go for it. And coming to the, the topic, passion. It's a unique style. Which means uh, you will feel you're special. You will feel something. You are the unique one, apart from out of the crowd, or maybe um, you are doing something really good for the community, or maybe good for your causes, or maybe something different. This is the difference. This is the huge difference between the working for money, working for your goal, or working for your personal passion. Because I really want to stress about the passion stuff. The people who always, passion is a most saturated word nowadays. People used to say, hey, I'm having a passion about sports. I'm having a passion about design. I'm having a passion about blocking. If you have a passion, you're not going to say it. 
you will prove it. If you are really good in designing, if you are really good in blocking, people will come and pick you. You don't need to face an interview. People will come and ask you, hey, can you come and join? Don't just chase the companies. Let the company and ask you to come and join. Build your repo. Improve your skill and knowledge. You don't have to go and beg for the company. Seriously, trust me. So how we recruit people? We hire attitude, not the talents. In our company, we don't hire talents. There's no word talents in my company because we hire people who are having the positive mindset, who really want to emphasize something, or who or they want to do something for their purpose of their life. So we hire attitudes, we train them, we nurture them. Because my company uh, structure is absolutely different from uh, the typical digital marketing companies. We are dealing with foreigners. So we hire people who are, um, in my company, I just want to tell you, in my company, most of the people, most of my co-workers are highly educated. They are degree holders, most of them are degree holders. I'm the one and only person, even my security also a degree holder, yeah. I'm the one and only person even who didn't pass a level. I'm really proud of that. Few of my professor, they are working for my company. So, how you can identify the person? How you can filter the person? I'm damn sure you guys, uh, when you're talking about um, uh, getting a job from a company, you used to say, you, maybe you will write something in your resume, hey, I'm, I'm fanatical about, I'm fanatical about uh, designing, I'm, I'm crazy about designing. But if you're crazy about designing, you're not going to say that word. You will portray that thing. You know how to portray that stuff. Let's talk. So the person will reflect you. Person will, will reflect, to, reflect to others who you are and what you do, how far you can go. And the people who are having the professional person, the personal person, they always trust their gut rather than going through the statistics, rather than checking uh, case studies, rather than relying on the typical surveys. They always trust their gut and they go and fail and they will take this as an investment and they will learn from that mistakes. Yes, next move will be solid and concrete. And of course, like I said before, I'm really, really proud of my mistakes. But I don't know what happened to me. Nowadays, I'm not doing any mistakes. But I, what, what kind of mistakes I'm doing right now, everybody's saying, hey, you're doing good. And your positive perspective, it's very important. How many of you are complaining about your current, your career, your education system? Yes, sir. Yeah, I understand. Your education system and your career, even the environment. How many days we are going to say like this? How many days that we are going to put the problem on others? Can we just start doing something in a different way? Because it's our country. Forget about the caste and forget about the nationality and everything. It's our country. We have to do something. Start from you. Just remove one bin, one trash from the floor. Every will, everybody will understand what you're doing. At least two or three people, they will start working on that part. So it will create inspiration. Don't just wait for others. You have to start doing by yourself. How I did? There are a lot of people. There are a lot of entrepreneurs. How they started their company. How they are doing their courses. Every time, look at the pos positive factors. Say an example, there are people, um, sometime maybe your friend did a bad thing for you. He's your 10 years old friend. So for just single mistake, you're going to break the relationship. But just imagine 10 years, what kind of help, what kind of stuff that he did for you. You're just instantly forgetting those stuff. Change your perspective. Just remember the last 10 years, what kind of good things he did for you. Then the negative thing will fade away instantly. Change your perspective. You'll be fine, trust me. And every challenges are gifted. Yeah. 
like a f- five years ago, I'm scared about the cops. So when I'm driving, so they always stop me. Hey, you are exceeding the speed, so you have to come to the court. So nowadays I learn the negotiation. I'm a pr- I'm a digital marketer, how I learned the negotiation part from the cops. I don't bribe anyone. I don't give any money. I started, because even though I, have, I don't know Sinhala, even my English is broken, I started convincing with them, hey, look at it, this is how I drive, this is how I'm driving, and this is the way that you have to do it. You don't have a cab, you are, you're not on the road. So that kind of excuse, so that kind of mistakes. I don't want to bribe them. I'm just spotting the mistake. I'm just trying to make them feel okay, because I really want to test my skill, still I'm Saranian or not. Nowadays, in North region, um, most of the people, they don't know who is Saranian in North, but they know my car very well. And the people who always smile, the entrepreneurs you see, the Mr. Lagiru, and there are a lot of entrepreneurs, so they used to smile to hide their tears when they are smiling, something like a hundred watts back, which means their tears, they are just remembering their tears. We are just trying to hide it because we don't want to tell you. We don't want to, we don't want to give you a bad feeling. You just go through it. You'll be fine. It's a good experience, trust me. And my key points are like, problem are the, problems are the rare opportunity to testify you. Are you a really a good man? Are you really a challengeful person? Person, Are you a programmer? Are you a problem solver? So accept it. If there's a problem, have a look. There's always a solution. There's always a solution. If every problem will start from a solution. You have to find it. You have to find the right one. You'll be fine. What we are doing, we always look at the problem and we will die. As I said again, I want to stress this point, you guys. Failure is a precious gift. Accept it. Learn it from that. If possible, do the same mistake again, because it's really good. If there's a traffic cop, what I do, I will hit the accelerator, because I want to know what he will do. Because only they will, I will get to know who I am, what kind of capacity I'm having it. So it is a bad advice. <laughs> Please, don't do this. <laughs> and humiliation and tears is the two strongest foundation. If someone humiliating you, if someone trashing you, someone bullying you, okay, that's really good. Accept it. If there's a worst case scenario, if there's a worst situation, defend it. But don't forget it. That kind of point, a pain that you have to keep remembering somewhere, sometime. Don't let it cure. You have to keep remembering that pain. Then only you will do something. Because as I said before, eight years ago, I failed to do a presentation. I cried. I screamed because I'm not able to deliver a keynote. Still, I'm remem- remembering the pa- pain. That's why I'm here. Thank you so much, and uh, thank, you, thank you for listening to my presentation. Thank you. Passionate story, and definitely encouraging you to follow your passion. We say a big thank you to Sharanyan Sharma, multi-award winning entrepreneur and founder and chairman of Extreme SEO Internet Solutions. We'd love to now invite on stage Acting General Manager, uh, Mobitel Financial Services, Mr. Kalhar Gamage, who will present a token of appreciation to Mr. Sharanyan Sharma. Can we invite Mr. Sharma once again on stage to accept this token of appreciation? Come on, energy, energy!